thanks so much, Ryan. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Ryan, if you, I know everyone's muted, but uh, Ryan, if you can't, just let me know. Um, as Ryan said, uh, my name is Paul Heslop. I've been with RCS just over 11 years. I'm a developer here. Um, been focused primarily on development for about seven or eight years um, and have been working with APIs in all shapes and forms and sizes uh, for quite a long time. Uh, I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. I'm sure a lot of people have questions. Uh, so we do welcome questions at the end. Um, so we'll try to get through the content. Um, and if you have any questions uh, along the way, just queue them up and uh, there'll be a, a Q and A at the end. Uh, so my brief explanation of API, I always like to start, um, I guess, kind of thinking of friends and family who might ask me what an API is, or they, they come to me and they say the word API. And <clears throat> let me click here. A lot of times this is what they think. They think API is magic. They hear, I have an API. My vendor has an API. I want to connect. I have this thing. It is great. Unfortunately, <laughs> That is not the case. Um, while they are great uh, and everywhere, uh, it is not a silver bullet. It is not universal. Um, they're all over the place and they are different, whether you're working with CounterPoint or any other software system out there. Um, and to kind of really understand that, you need to get a better idea of what API actually means um, you know, from a technical perspective. And that's why I like to segue into this slide. And the reason why I like to segue into this slide is really to just click this animation button and say, you don't need to know anything about that. I'm a, I'm a developer, <laughs> I develop APIs, and I don't even know what most of that means. So as, as a retailer, you, you don't, unless you're super interested or super bored, you don't really need to know the nuts and bolts or the, the, the technical aspects of, of how it works. Um, and if you Google it, you, you probably just kind of get, get lost. I know I do at least. Uh, what you do need to know is what it actually means in English. So API is actually a, a, an init, initialism. Uh, it stands for Application Programming Interface. Um, but really what it comes down to is you just want to drill into this word interface. So all those graphs, all these three words really boil down to this second definition of the word interface. And really you can consolidate this more. All an API is, is it is the single point where two systems connect to each other. And for the purpose of this conversation, uh, it is two computer systems, whether it is a computer that you're using connecting to a printer, whether it's counterpoint connecting to a website, whether it's uh, Google connecting to Instagram, um, it is just that one single point where two systems connect. That is what an API is. Uh, and I like to segue into, before we get into the counterpoint stuff here, uh, I like to segue into everyday examples. This is what I like to call the API slide because the word API is everywhere. Uh, and you'll see that API isn't just specific to the internet. It isn't specific to CounterPoint. It isn't specific to a brand or a company. It is everywhere. So I have a Garmin smartwatch. I also have the Strava app. Uh, if I do a Strava activity, um, I'm done with my activity. My phone uses an API to connect to my watch to get the information. And then my phone uses an API to upload it to Strava. So all my Strava buddies can see what I did on the website. Um, same thing with Google, but Google, I have literally everything because everything integrates with Google and Google has lists of things that you connect, can connect to and documentation on how, you know, everything from uh, Google Maps to, to Google Docs to Gmail, uh, everything or most things can be accessed outside of Google uh, using this, uh, using their API. Uh, website single sign-on is another great example. So if you log into Instagram or LinkedIn, uh, they have their own accounts where you can have a specific Instagram account, or you'll often see single sign-on for login with Facebook or sign in with Google. So when you press these buttons, uh, Instagram or LinkedIn may not know anything about your Google account or when you signed up or if you're actually an active Google user. So when you press this button, it calls out to Google using API again, 
um, and validates your information and then connects the two accounts. So then they are linked. Um, and that's all that single point of contact between those two systems or the API. <clears throat> um, and then finally, uh, even though this is kind of web-based and uh, this, this conversation is focused, you know, on really on CounterPoint and the web, uh, I do want to point out that APIs predate the internet and predate the web, and they're not specific to online. Uh, if you plug in a printer to your computer, the printer, even if it's through a cable, whether it be a, a USB or serial cable or uh, you know any anything, it will use an API to send that piece of paper with those words on it from your computer to your printer. Because your printer doesn't know if it is connecting to a Mac, if it's connecting to a Linux system, if it's connecting to Windows, if it's Windows 10, Windows 3.1, Mac OS X, it has no idea. So that API is really that middle layer or that connection point, which just says, hey, this is just a piece of paper, print it out, and uh, you know that's it. Would you say would you say that's like one of the first uses of an API, probably? Uh, it's one of the uh, it's one of the earlier ones. I, I think that's a whole different conversation. Um, yeah. And I, I think we can share the slide deck. And but that second slide, one of those images was from, I think, original API design from like the 50s or 60s or something. So. Oh wow. Um, but really, this is just to emphasize that it's not just internet that uses APIs. It's it's really every everything everything computers. Yeah. Um, and then finally, CounterPoint, which we're kind of shift uh, our focus over here to CounterPoint. So CounterPoint uses APIs uh, over the web to synchronize with your e-commerce site. Um, it also uses them for devices. So all your credit cards and your Ingenicos and whatever devices you have use an API to, uh, you know, say, hey, I spent five dollars, swipe it, and then this would use an API to tell your tell your bank or tell secure pay, you know, five, five dollars was was debited, charge this and complete the transaction. So those are kind of everyday examples. Um, next, we're going to go into the uh, really e -com and the web uh, API that is available for CounterPoint. Uh, so CounterPoint developed this a number of years ago. It's just called the NCR CounterPoint API. It doesn't have a fancy name or anything. Um, and it is available online and is available to integrate, uh, integrate into CounterPoint. And uh, what I'm going to go into now is kind of two specific examples of the, the really ideal scenarios and the things that it does really well for CounterPoint, for uh, retailers uh, specifically. <clears throat> so the first example um, really is e -com, and it uh, is CounterPoint inventory. Uh, and availability on your website. So here I've outlined a scenario which kind of uh, at a high level mimics uh, API calls or, or API individual connections which tell your website what CounterPoint is doing and tell CounterPoint what your website is doing. So you might have your uh, website, whether it's through you know Shopify or Big Commerce or uh, whatever your provider is, it's using the NCR API. So if somebody hits that web page, um, and that web page says, "Hey, I'm the web page Counterpoint. Do you believe me?" Um, and that's kind of the handshake or the login. And then once they log in, uh, it's called really a, a authentication and say, "Okay, you actually who who." you are who you say you are, uh, what do you want today? Uh, and then your website would use the API and say, hey, CounterPoint, can you tell me how many widgets I have? This customer is on the shopping cart and they want to buy five. Do you have five available to buy? And then CounterPoint would go into your database and look at all your committed quantity, your on-hand quantity, kind of what's available in store um, and where your inventory is at. And it would tell the website, yeah, we have enough to sell. We have 10. You can go ahead and complete the transaction. Um, and then from, from there, your, your website can do a couple of things. Uh, it can use the NCR API to create an order or a ticket and actually commit that inventory. Um, and then kind of uh, it would 
could potentially take payment uh, using a third party payment gateway and just send your payment in to CounterPoint is fully paid and you can reconcile outside of CounterPoint. Or to simplify that, um, and we have plenty of customers who do this, um, specifically garden centers and specifically garden centers this time of year when you're buying you know, trees or plants or something and, and uh, you know, it doesn't really make sense to ship them or they go so fast that you, you can't really buy online and, and order ahead. They just give you what you have on hand. You know, we have 15 on hand, but they are going fast. So come in and get one, put them in the back of your pickup truck uh, and be on your way. Uh, and the, the CounterPoint API has endpoints specifically for that, you know, to provide inventory by location. Um, and that it's, it's a really good use of it. Uh, another example that we get requests for uh, quite a bit is customers and customer loyalty. Um, so uh, another endpoint that uh, the CounterPoint API has, and I, I guess I'll back up here by endpoint, uh, I mean, it's just another connection point. Uh, it, it's just another way for, again, uh, that, that single point of contact, another way for your website or wherever to contact a specific point of CounterPoint or a specific endpoint into CounterPoint. Uh, so the example here would be you have a busy store um, and you're trying to launch a new loyalty program, um, but you know it might be loud or busy or uh, you might be kind of short staffed, uh, you know, new store openings often are. Um, so what you want to do is you want to create a way for a customer to sign themselves up for the loyalty program. So a good way to do this is you could have signage across your store that says, hey, join our loyalty, loyalty program. And very simply, you could just slap a, a QR code on there that you generate from you know, Google Chrome or whatever. Uh, and that QR code, once you scan it, could just redirect the person's phone uh, to a custom web page. Uh, they have, you know, if you Google it, they have kind of out of the box. Uh, one great one is called Jot Form which allows you to quickly create surveys and then send the results to different places. There's a lot of end, um, integrations into different APIs um, that you can use with JotForm. Um, or if you have an in-house developer or a tinkerer, um, you know, you could create your own JavaScript page uh, and to, to make a call from that is, is pretty easy. Uh, so anyway, so they would hit okay. They've entered in zip, phone, address, um, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever they do, uh, that would call the create customer record and it would pass in all relevant details or everything that they filled in. Um, and kind of depending on your validation here, you could potentially do a rule like, um, you know, if they fill in all the information, not only create a customer number, but add them to the loyalty program best customers in CounterPoint. Um, and the cool thing about that is, and the cool thing about, uh, APIs and NCR API in general is it's kind of instantaneous. So as long as it gets a connection and it's successful uh, and it validates fine, that customer is just in CounterPoint, you know? So if they're in the back of the line, there's 10 people in, ahead of them, uh, they scan the QR code, they spend five minutes entering their information, they press okay, uh, they get to that front of the line, they put their box on the table and they just say, hey, I just signed up for the loyalty program, can you look me up? Um, sure. So the, the sales rep just press look up customer and looks up in, in the ways that you normally would, whether it's by phone, phone or name, uh, and that customer could be located and then added uh, to the transaction. That's pretty great too. If they're just, if they're in a hurry and you want them to sign up for your loyalty program, they can just scan it and do it on their own time and they don't have to do it right then and there. And so. I think that's oh, yeah. pretty yeah, that's convenient great. for people. That's a great point. Yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't have to be instant. It doesn't even have to be on the phone. I mean, you could, th this would apply anywhere. You could put a link on your website if you want to drive website traffic, um, you know, uh, about your business. You know, you say visit our website and read this and hide this somewhere kind of deep in your website. So they have to read through all sorts of stuff before they can join, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Okay, well, so those are those are cool things. I'm kind of getting to the to the end here. Um, 
but it's not bulletproof. Uh, there are challenges, and there are challenges not only with the NC NCR API, but with all APIs ever. There's there's no silver bullet. There's no perfect solution, uh, but there are great solutions, and, and there are ways to get around uh, those challenges. So the biggest one these days that we see is this top bullet. So everyone has an API, especially in in our our business with retailers who are dealing with vendors and different um, you know, CRM platforms and e-commerce platforms and web startups. Uh, everybody has their own API. So they've either built one that connects to their system or they've inherited one and there's all sorts of documentation um, out there. And many times they require uh, counterpoint or us to connect to theirs and it could be the other way around and that's one of the challenges that you never really know going into a project you could have um you know vendor xyz uh that you want to start doing business with and they say hey we have awesome developers just give us your api we'll do all the work um but then you have vendor um you know vendor two who says the other way around they're like well no we'll be we have uh, our own API and you guys can do all the work to, to connect. So it really depends on the scenario and it's kind of different every time. Um, that being said, regardless of what side it's on, uh, there's no one single API that does everything. And sometimes, you know, the, the counterpoint API really might not be the best fit. Sometimes it will be, uh, sometimes it won't. Um, I will say that it does excel with, uh, you know, as I said, inventory, uh, creating customers, um, you know, creating tickets and orders just for that e-com shopping cart. It's a really good solution for that. Um, where it lacks is some of the back office functionality. And I know that that at least somewhere is on NCR's roadmap. So things like, um, you know, uh, transfers or adjustments or receivers or things like that. Um, out, out of the box with uh, a counterpoint API, you, you will not get that functionality. Um, but, you know, that can happen with uh, vendor APIs too. So as I said, nothing is perfect. So it could be 99% there, but you're missing one little connection point that is key to your business or, or the other way around. So how do you get around that? Well, what you can do is a custom solution. So, you know, as, as I said, everybody has their APIs. So um, you can don't necessarily have to rely on the NCR one. So you can create custom solutions. Um, so we do have some out of the box ones uh, and we do have uh, ability to create uh, custom ones, you know, depending on the scenario. Um, some kind of examples out of the box is uh, we do have a connection to Salesforce, which syncs your customer data to Salesforce accounts uh, and that can be automated on a schedule. Uh, and you can do like a one-to-one -one mapping between counterpoint um, Counterpoint and Salesforce. Um, a popular one that we have is Avalara. So that uh, you probably Avalara it uh, at point of sale, you can just press a button or have it happen automatically and it will go out to Avalara and bring back the appropriate taxes. So if you're in say New York state and you have complicated, you know, sugar tax and, and food tax and different jurisdictions jurisdictions and authorities. Uh, it takes all the guesswork and headaches out of that and, and all of the setup away from CounterPoint. And you just say, hey, Avalara, you take care of tax reporting, you take care of taxes. Um, I, you know, I just want CounterPoint to, to process sales and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, another popular one we do is ShipStation. Uh, that's for shipping outside of CounterPoint. Um, so really that's, that's a pretty simple one. Um, really we just send your orders up to ShipStation uh, and they appear on the ShipStation website and then you can do all your, your packing and shipping and uh, labeling and everything from there. Um, Pointy is another good one. So that's a, uh, that's a Google solution. And really that, what that allows you to do is uh, sign up your stores for the, the Pointy service, which uh, uses Google geolocation and advertises your website um, and your inventory and your quantity and kind of gives you higher, higher visibility out there. Um, and then the last one I'm going to talk about is actually not a specific one. It's just called your proprietary API. <laughs> uh, so what we have the ability to do and we have done before um, 
is if you have a hire your own developer or have your own system and build your own API. So you build a reporting website uh, that you want, you know, KPIs or, uh, you know, sales performance indicators or something um, on your internal intranet for your organization. Um, so you could create an API that just says, hey, it's going to accept store, date, and sales. Counterpoint, here it is. You just send me store, date, and sales every day. You just send it over the internet through an API, and then I'll take care of the rest. You know, we'll take, translate that into reporting graphs or dashboards or Excel files uh, or whatever it might be. Uh, and that, you know that doesn't just have to be sales. It could be any number of any number of connections, and it really it depends on the project, um, you know, and and the customer who's requesting it. Uh, and really, that's all I had. So, I, 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 as I said, I wanted to keep it short and brief, um, or short and sweet. Um, so, uh, if there are any questions coming in, um, I guess over to over to Ryan. Please let us know. Thanks, Paul. A lot of great stuff in there. Hopefully, um, everyone has a little bit better understanding of what an API is and what it can do. Uh, we do have a question from Robin. Do you have an API for Blackbaud uh, donor management, so or have we worked with Blackbaud donor management software? Uh, we have not worked directly with Blackbaud uh, donor management. We have worked with other donor managements before. Actually, I might be. Is Blackbaud the same? Blackbaud the same as Razor's Edge? Are they one and the same? I know they used to be separate. Uh, Robin, if you know if those are the same let us know yeah so we don't have currently we don't have an out of the box um but if that's something that you're interested in and you have you have a contact over there um please let us know and we you know we can look up the api documentation um uh they, it looks like they are the same uh, black body okay. razor's edge okay uh does it matter if we have counterpoint on-prem or on our own sql server uh, it it does not. Um, so to get too technical for probably uh, a, a short period of time, uh, the NCR Counterpoint API is a Windows service that gets installed wherever, whatever machine your Counterpoint application uh, lives on. So it, it doesn't matter where, as long as it can see your counterpoint installation files, what we call the top level directory, because uh, that's how it validates to counterpoint, you're good. Um, really the only prerequisite is once you install it, it gets tied to a port, what's called a port, which is like a address. And what, what you just have to do is uh, configure your firewall to make that address public to the internet. Um, and this again, getting too technical, but you know, obviously, you would want to limit that to specific addresses. So, kind of get all your ducks in a row first and figure out um, where your API calls are coming from, and just limit those. So, you know, only your website or whatever can can call out to Counterpoint. Great. Um, can you talk more about the NCR roadmap? Um, I don't. I don't know if you're able to. If uh, but we have we have been using the NCR API. This is Nick Wilson. Um, we have been using the a NCR API for several years. It seems like NCR API is there, but it is a black hole when it comes to development troubleshooting. There are no new releases of the API, and it, it just ha he, I think he's saying it hasn't been updated in a while, and he's wondering if if they're planning any updates that you know of. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Nick. Yeah. Well, I've actually worked with you specifically on it before. Um, uh, so. I don't know details about their timeline for roadmap. Um, I, I will say that they did push out an update maybe six months ago. You can go to the GitHub and check and, and see it, but uh, it was it was an update that had to do with out of balance distributions when uh, creating payments. Um, and I believe that at least at one time you were having that issue. Um, and I do know that at least they reported and, and created a release that they resolved it. Um, but in terms of their timeline for, you know, uh, future additions, bug fixes, or features, uh, I I can't speak specifically to that. I can try to get you more information though. 
Great. Uh, Pablo has a great question, which we uh, missed covering. Is there an extra cost to the CounterPoint API? Uh, so NCR provides the CounterPoint API for free. It's it's a free option. You just update your registration INI file. Um, and there are various options for installation. Um, we can provide professional services to you um, to assist with the installation. Um, obviously we can, or we can just, you know, provide you the installation files and you can follow the, the GitHub and the instructions um, uh, and, and install it yourself uh, if you're not hosted by us. <clears throat> um, but, you know, out, outside of that, if you require assistance with calls or, um, you know, you know how to use it or definition from CounterPoint, uh, we can certainly provide that as a professional service. And it really depends on the scenario and the project, um, you know, what you're looking to do um, on, on what that would look like. Great. Uh, Marcy kind of wants to know a little bit more about the Salesforce API. Um, I think we'll probably have the account rep reach out unless you have anything else you'd like to add about Salesforce. Um, she says that they have a custom bridge that connects Salesforce to CounterPoint customers, um, including their category, but not tickets. Uh, sure. So, uh, and that, that is one of our newer ones. And um, uh, we, we'll certainly have your account rep reach out. Um, but right now we integrate just from the CounterPoint customer record to uh, Salesforce accounts. Um, and so we don't do like actual, we don't send tickets over or anything. Um, we really built it um, more so the Salesforce folks could have a, a high level look at like AR customers um, and, and track AR customers from Salesforce. Um, I will say though that it does support any and all custom fields on both sides. So when you do open it up, you have um, kind of a WYSIWYG field selector. So it will list all your fields in CounterPoint um, and then it will dynamically list all of your Salesforce fields. So, and as you know, with Salesforce, you can add a million uh, custom fields if you want to any screen, but specifically to the account screen. So, um, you know, things like, uh, aging balance over 90 days might not be a default Salesforce field, but if you add it to Salesforce, you can map it uh, to CounterPoint. And then does it update both ways? Like if you update an account in Salesforce, will it update them in CounterPoint? Uh, it update, uh, no, it does not. It updates from CounterPoint to Salesforce. Okay. Based on the CounterPoint customer number. Great. Um, Tracy wants to know, can we, can we have access if we use you as our host for CounterPoint? I think yes. This, yeah. Yeah. And we, we have uh, numerous, plenty of uh, hosted customers who use, um, who, who have the API. Uh, and I, I will say to piggyback off of that and the previous question that came in, and I think this actually came in before the webinar as a question, um, but uh, part of the installation is we can connect your practice company to the API and you can actually connect as many practice companies or counterpoint companies to your API instance as you'd like. So you could, you could technically create, a, uh, you could have your live production system and then you could have your like in-house practice company that you do all your training in. And then if you wanna set up the API and have some a uh, third party vendor uh, developed to it, you could create a third copy called like Sandbox and that developer could do all the development against the Sandbox and it would be completely disconnected from both your uh, in-house practice company for your employees and for your production uh, uh, instance. You know, and then when, when you approve and everybody looks good, everybody's happy, um, it's just a matter of providing what's called keys, like a different username and password um, to that developer or, or to wh whoever is integrating uh, to connect to your live system. And that's typically what, that's how we set it up anyway. So we would, if we do the installation for you, we would never, <clears throat> or not never, um, we, we try not to give, uh, you know, third party vendors or developers access to your live system, uh, you know, until you say, 
hey, this looks good. Let's let's switch over. We always start with a sandbox. Great. I think uh, questions are starting to taper off. If anybody has any less last minute questions, uh, feel free to get them in there. I'm going to ask a question to everybody, sort of a quiz. Uh, did anybody scan the QR code that was on the screen? Can they tell me where it went? Uh, oh, Eric, Eric's raising his hand. <laughs> it's not a, it's a pretty simple answer. You could probably guess it, but let's see if anybody knows. <laughs> Retail control systems, of course. Good job, Eric. I'm glad it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't test it. I don't. I don't think I actually scanned it. I just thought, hey, this will be cool. Yeah, I scanned it as well. Uh, great. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I think that's all the questions we have. Um, as always, if you have any further questions that you think of, feel free to reach out to myself, marketing at Retail Control Systems, or your account rep, and um, we will definitely get back to you with an answer. This recording will be emailed to everybody who signed up and it'll also be on our YouTube channel. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, check it out. There's a lot of great stuff we're constantly updating. So be sure to check it out. Thanks, Paul. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.